Hello and welcome to this video about understanding infinity. We will look at three topics and you might be surprised by the path we'll take through the infinity in mathematics, the infinity of God and the infinity of the world. As it is with all my videos you don't need to have a lot of knowledge in any of these topics, especially not mathematics. The only thing you need is an open mind and the willingness to use it. The infinity in mathematics could also be called the unreality of finite numbers and measures, and it's quite mind-boggling. I will take this ruler to show you, and it doesn't really matter which ob object we looked at, however, the ruler is helpful because it already has numbers and measures to it. So naturally we think that everything can be measured in all its dimensions. So in this case we say that this ruler is uh, 6 inches wide. However, how real are 6 inches? How real is this measurement? If we think about it we'll see that 6 inches or any type of measurement is extremely unreal. Let me explain with something different. How real, for example, is the value of a coin? Well, it just doesn't exist. It is nothing but an institution that was made by humans due to the helpfulness of trade. Only the, the, the coin itself is real or that which creates the coin. It's the same with a 6 inches measurement. It's no real thing. Half of the world doesn't even use inches but centimeters. But that's nothing but another instituted concept as well. What I want to say is that in mathematics and in reality the width of this ruler is infinite. There are infinite points in between the beginning and the end. And the funny thing is that half the width of the ruler is infinite as well. So at this point, are we even sure what it means if we say 6 plus 3 equals 9? Well, I got a bit uncertain. So you might already have a glimpse of infinity here. Because the question is, why is the part of the whole still the same or equal to the whole. And it sounds quite strange to us in the first place, but that's normal, since we approach the logic of high dimensions. And uh, we remember those equations, which I'm not going to read. But I'll go to our next topic, which is the infinity of God. And it starts with a somewhat popular question, which is uh, if God would or is truly almighty, as everybody says he is, could he create a rock that is that heavy he couldn't lift it anymore? And of course this question is highly illogical and cannot be answered with the same, but only with higher logic. So let's try. First of all, <coughs> God is not a grumpy old man or any other separate being. At this point, let me tell you that any connotation and idea you have of the word God might be in the way of further understanding. We don't want to explain the infinite through the word, just a word, God. That's not possible. We need to do it the other way around. We want to peek into the infinite and then know what it is. So quite often in previous videos, God was actually described as it, because it has no preconceived ideas to it. So replace God with whatever other word you like, but again with no preconceptions, prejudice or connotation. Some people might find it difficult to follow the thinking, for they believe in the absence of a grumpy old man as God, and thus believe in the absence of it. However, 
can you be certain to know the absence of it? I mean, especially since we kind of quite scientifically proved the existence of it. Okay, so getting past all that, what do we assume to know about God? First of all, God is infinite. He is, well, it is all present, but without acting. All knowing, but this kind of maybe a better word would be all witnessing and almighty. But this sounds like somebody having an agenda, so all creating might be a better word. This means that nothing is not God. And by the way, this includes you. Yet there's more we can say in the infinity of it, even a part contains all. So speaking in images, all that creates our incredibly huge universe is contained and exists in a small daisy flower as a whole. Or each single grain of sand contains the same infinity as the whole universe, which leads us to the infinity of the world. And now if we apply our logic from what we learned above, isn't everything in the world infinite? For sure time is, and as you might remember, time is truly eternity, which doesn't mean time without end, but without time. Everything just happens in the now, always, and there's nothing that ever happened outside of now. Now is eternal, but it's infinite. You take a photo in the now, you look at the photo in the now, you go for a walk, you leave in the now and you arrive in the now. You are born in the now and you die in the now. Imagine a lifetime being this ruler again. Then normally we'd think that our life moves along an imaginary line from birth to death. However, no matter where you are, you are always in the now. And when you're young, you most commonly experience feelings and thoughts of having your life in front of you. And when you're older, you experience feelings and thoughts of having lived most of your life. The strange thing is that each arrow you could possibly draw is you experience feelings and thoughts of what is. So each dot you could point at is you in the now. It's very similar with space, as you might remember, space is truly infinity, which doesn't mean that it's space without any borders, but just without space. I mean, if it's infinite, what does it matter? I feel that there's much more to say about this. However, the infinity of space was already topic in previous videos, so please refer to those videos if you're interested, and I hope you can forgive me right now for taking the short route in here. In the end, well, kind of all that counts is the value you would get from thinking about all this stuff, and for me it's not a having fun by talking crazy, but uh, about filling life with wonder and awe. So tell me, what is the size of your consciousness? Or how many different emotions could you potentially experience in this moment? <laughs>